Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I wanna to talk to you about those ingredients that I try to avoid at all costs from my skincare products and the reasons why I do so. Talking about skincare ingredients is a very controversial topic that sparks a lot of debate because there are many people with different opinions and views about certain ingredients. Here my aim is not to try to demonize any of them, but to share with you why I avoid these ingredients, especially because of my sensitive skin, and of course make you understand a little bit more about my skincare philosophy. There's always gonna be kind of like the gray area with all of these ingredients, and I think it's because some components, they serve multiple purposes in the product, or some of them, they have a very particular or specific task. Um, but at the end, I think it's mainly about the concentration of the ingredient and as well the formulation overall. That's why I believe that everything should be taken with a grain of salt. We should all do our own research so we can make empowered decisions when it comes to choosing the best products for our skin. Remember that every skin need is very unique and individual and it's always good to be aware of those ingredients and how these can potentially interact with your particular skincare needs and concerns. The reason why I try to avoid all the ingredients I'm going to mention is because they're kind of like problematic ingredients and they possess a high risk of potentially irritating and sensitizing the skin. Let's begin with cleansers and we all know that the cleansing step by itself tends to be a very harsh and stripping uh, process on the skin. And so I tried doing it with a product that is sulfate free. Um, I kind of like have as well some sort of like sensitivity or allergies to sulfates. So I try to avoid it overall on my skincare and hair care products. Sulfates are a type of surfactants and surfactants are cleansing agents that they give your products that capability to lather. Um, they give that very bouncy, foamy consistency. These are very effective at removing any kind of dirt and oil-based products from the surface of your skin. And so they can disrupt your natural skin's lipid barrier. Of course, not all surfactants are made equal. There are less harsh um, types of them, but the one that I try to avoid at all costs is the SLS. This is very harsh and it tends to be very drying and stripping on the skin. In fact, something that I heard is that if you see in a skincare product that there's multiple uh, different types of uh, surfactants, this product tends to be gentler on the skin because you will have less concentration of the different cleansing agents um, together when they're in combination. And so that's also a good point to take into consideration when reading the ingredient list or choosing a skincare product. Another ingredient that I don't like in my skincare products as well is denatured or SD alcohols. Listed as well as ethanol, isopropyl or polyvinyl alcohols. These are the very quick drying ones that evaporate super fast and they make your skincare products absorbed very quickly. These are used to make your skincare products feel way less and to mattify your skin, but they're extremely drying. On the other hand, please don't confuse these alcohols with the fatty alcohols. These are another category and they serve different purposes in skincare. I'm gonna be making a video on how to read the ingredients list of your skincare products. So stay tuned for that. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss this video. And there I'm gonna give you more specifics about these uh, differences between these kind of alcohols and how to know which ones are actually really good for your skin. Third ingredient is listed in your skincare product as fragrance or perfumes. In order to understand better the skincare products, labels, and ingredients, it's very important to have a knowledge of how the cosmetics industry is regulated. A clear example is with fragrance. They label all the fragrant ingredients under this term of fragrance or perfume, but the companies are not really required to disclose what kind of ingredients form part of that fragrance, um, how many of them, the concentration of any of them. And so they could be from one to a thousand uh, different chemical ingredients 
that are just toxic to, to your skin. And so I don't really know what's in it, so I rather stay away from it. And besides, personally, I'm not the kind of person who enjoys a very overpowering scent on my skincare products, especially when they linger throughout the day. That's something I can't stand. And I've noticed that on my sensitive skin, really products that contain any sort of fragrance or perfumes, they don't really do well. They tend to um, irritate my skin really easily. Um, so yes, I mean, whenever I go down to the ingredients list and I check that there's no other ingredient that in the past have given me any sort of issues, I know it's because of fragrance or perfume. Next are essential oils. These are highly concentrated, volatile plant extracts that are used in the skincare, usually as an alternative for synthetic fragrance. But they possess a high risk of irritation on the skin and can cause contact dermatitis. This is a clear example that not always natural means better. These essential oils such as lavender, eucalyptus, peppermint, clove, cinnamon, um, tea tree, bergamot, all of these are really um, irritating and sensitizing to the skin. And by being in an extract form, you don't really know how much concentration of this essential oil this extract can have. There's no way to measure that. So it's too much of a risk and um, that's why I just don't like them on my skincare products. I love them for a sensorial experience through aromatherapy, but not on my skin. The last ones are the citrus extracts or oils, such as lemon peel, orange peel, um, grapefruit, lime extracts. All of these are proven to be extremely irritating and sensitizing towards the skin. They can cause inflammation, dermatitis, and a condition that is called phytoxicity. Um, this is when they're not very stable in the presence of UV rays and they can cause burns on your skin. Um, so yeah, I also stay away from those. And that's it with this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If it was like that, as always, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, to share it, and to subscribe to my channel for much more. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on my next one. Bye. These are listed as well as ethanol, isopropyl, alcohol and polyvinyl, polyvinyl, vinyl, polyvinyl, polyvinyl.